Hello, digital scrapbooking world. I'm Hummy from Hummy's World, and I'm looking at a page on the Daily Digi of Steph. You can see her name here, and this is her uh, layout of recording the Digi Show. The Digi Show is a paper clipping. Um, podcast, and if you haven't had an opportunity to look at uh, to listen to that and find it, you can find it um, on the paper clipping website, or you can find it through iTunes. And I really suggest that show. Um, it's quite interesting to listen to. And when Stephanie was with them recording a recent show talking about drop shadows, somebody brought up that. They thought Photoshop Elements 9 could put drop shadows on its own layer. I And then Stephanie um, asked me if I was aware uh, whether or not it did, and I told her I wasn't aware that it did that. I'm still not aware. I haven't found it. It may be a secret that's out there. Uh, but I um, do know of a, several other methods of putting a drop shadow on its own layer in Photoshop Elements, and I told her I would uh, share that with you. I do have a video tutorial of it in one of my lessons in the subscriber area, but I'm always well, well uh, welcome to help out in any way um, sharing with digital scrapbookers if asked. And so I have here a layout that I made recently for one of my filter challenges um, in the subscriber area. Uh, this is the filter applied right here. And I put a custom drop shadow on its own layer on this tag. Um, this tag is also uh, in my subscriber area. So let's begin dissecting this layout a little bit. You see here is the tag or the journaling mat, card, whatever you want to call it, and here is the drop shadow on its own layer. If I put this tag so the visibility is off by clicking on the eye, you can see that the drop shadow is on a layer of its own. I'm going to drag this card down to the new layers icon to duplicate it. I'm going to make these two layers invisible so I can bring this card up to the top and we're going to play with it so I can show you exactly how easy this is to do. Now, if I was trying to put a custom drop shadow on this photo here, since it's so large and takes up all of uh, the file size, I would probably resort to using the other tutorial that I have. That I, there's a free PDF of it on my website. Um, this works better for the smaller items, and you're going to see why here in just a second. To move forward, let's go to our effects palette and choose a soft drop shadow or whatever drop shadow you want to start with. It doesn't really matter. <coughs> Click on the FX to bring up the style settings box. Then move the distance slider and your goal is to move the slider and up enough so that um, the shadow is separated from the element itself. Now, you'll see that it's pretty jumpy and sensitive, and you may find yourself wanting to put the exact number in this box, but let me show you a little quick tip that um, is going to help you. If you reach right out here on the desktop, you can click down on the shadow itself, holding down with your mouse key, and drag it wherever you want. <laughs> it's a pretty fun and cool tip, huh? So your goal is to get it separated. Click OK. Next, you need to, this is an important step, right click and simplify. That's going to commit that drop shadow into that layer. And now you can see when I move it around, it's committed to it over here. Grab your rectangular marquee tool and make a selection around that drop shadow right click and choose layer via cut. 
Now it has cut that drop shadow from the layer. So this is now on a layer by itself. It looks like it did when um, we originally first started. And the drop shadow is on a layer by itself. Drag your drop shadow layer down and bring that drop shadow back up behind your element. Now we can zoom in and start doing some custom settings to this drop shadow. If you, there, you can read my other tutorial um, on custom drop shadows um, to get some more uh, details about things that you can do. Uh, but basically, you can hold down your control key and just drag it. I'm going to drag this one in. I think this is what I did to create my other one because I only wanted the drop shadow really up here. And now I have a custom drop shadow so that it only sticks up at the top of uh, this card to make it look like the card is kind of coming um, off the page a little bit like somebody has pulled their fingers in there. To further edit this drop shadow though, if you don't want to just use the um, control key, uh, you can grab the smudge tool, which is right here. Um, make your brush a little bit bigger using the bracket keys on your keyboard and begin uh, manually moving these. Let's say I want to move this down a little bit right here and in a little bit right here. Or, if I make it really big, I can pull the drop shadow out. Let's do it down here. Whoops. Takes a while to process when you start using the smudge tool. Um, I can pull it out just a little bit under here so it looks like it is. I pulled it out a little too much there. You just kind of keep smudging around. So down here you can see how if I come out it looks like the paper is coming off the page a little bit right here in the middle. See you can do that over here. Or wait, let's put that back in. Let's say maybe we want this corner to look like it's coming off the page a little bit. Just kind of smudge that out there. I got it a little too much. And, you know, if you want, uh, you can do such things as um, changing the color of your drop shadow uh, before you put it up here for a new one. And you can change the blending mode to uh, maybe color burn, lower the opacity some if you need to, uh, do all sorts of things to uh, make that a custom drop shadow. Uh, so real quick, let's do that again and I'll show you how fast this can be. I'm going to apply a drop shadow, open up the style settings, bring up the distance, grab it so it's on, on its own layer, marquee tool, right click, layer via, oh, let's uh, right click on this and simplify. I forgot that, layer, that step. Told you it was important. Right click, layer via cut, and now it's on its own layer just as easy as that and then you can begin um, using your control key and uh, customizing it by pulling the various edges or using your smudge tool and um, there are some other tips uh, for creating highlights on top uh, to make it even more realistic and things in my PDF tutorial you're welcome to go and read it I hope you've uh, learned this as something new today and I hope I've been able to help you and I hope you're not getting out there and doing lots of lots of digital scrapbooking. Bye y'all!